this is a typical uh, application we have here. You have uh, an illumination from uh, um, you have an illumination from the bottom of the of the car, and as a very grazing incident, you see the module here is extremely small. It's only a, a few cubic centimeters in size, and um, the uh, uh, and the and the secret behind it is that you have many many channels in parallel that allow for the illumination of a large area. Um, that means um, you have each of these micro lens, which is less than a millimeter, creates a full picture in the far field. And uh, you see here this typical patterns that we project. Each of this uh, uh, micro lens generates a full pattern on the whole street. That means you have hundreds of patterns that are superimposing. And, um, at the, <coughs> the, uh, the trick behind it, why does it work so well, is because when you miniaturize a system, you have different scaling laws for the imaging optics. That means when you, in the, when you decrease the size of an image, uh, of an imaging optics, the depth of photos depth of focus in this case is strongly increasing. That means here this lens uh, is about a hundred times smaller than a classical uh, uh, emulation optics, and therefore you have a much, much larger depth of focus. So uh, one lens is not enough. You have to make an array of lenses, and at the same time when you have the, um, when you have the grazing incident, you also have a lar very large area where you have a sharp image. So you can go from our half a meter or actually from a few centimeters. We've done it also in another application on a few centimeters to, to several meters. Um, and this incident can be basically uh, uh, just a few degrees, degrees, less than 10 degrees, and you always get a sharp image. Um, the other nice thing is when you superimpose many, many images, you get the... Um, you get a mixing of each channel. So imagine you have here an RGB source and you and you try to collimate them and each of this channel has a different uh, image uh, or a different color. And then, but when you superimpose all of these different colors in the far field, you see what you get on the right side is a completely white image. This is a great advantage of MLA optics. So they basically have no chromaticity uh, 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 issues in this sense that they can mix uh, bad light sources, so to say. Uh, each of these channels, as mentioned earlier, has these uh, has a similar pattern or the same pattern, uh, more or less, um, and uh, is and each of these pattern has to be calculated specifically. So we have a lot of algorithms generated for this, where each of this pattern is is meticulously calculated uh, in a in a special algorithm, and then we can project that into the far field. Um, I mentioned earlier this is a scalable uh, high volume process where we can go to uh, 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 hundreds of wafers per day. And um, that means we can uh, imprint uh, uh, with, um, with a stamp, the micro lenses on a glass wafer, where we also have the, the chromium pattern. The chromium pattern is what you saw on the previous slide. Then we do the same on the other side. So it's basically a double-sided element. So the one part of the lens is the illumination and the other is the uh, uh, um, imaging lens. Um, the nice thing about this imprint process is you can have arbitrary lens shapes. You can also stack wafers by stacking a wafer level optics type uh, uh, packaging and, uh, and this gives you a lot of design freedom in the, um, in the optical design. The system remains small. So the typical thickness of these wafers between half a millimeter and three millimeters. So you can have a stack here that is less than a centimeter in thickness much less, few, typically a few millimeters, and you get the full imaging capabilities. Um, I can show you a few applications like these ones. Um, so uh, where you find in the, in the news and, and, and on, on the marketing websites of the automotive industry, where different light carpets are now applied to mostly high-end modules, or it gets into the mid-size now as well. Um, so what are the next opportunities? Very clearly, so from the so-called gadget of the light carpet, which is also a very distinguishing element, the next thing is, of course, headlamps. So there's already one company that started with, with micro-optics and headlamps, uh, which is Lucid, and the Lucid Air is coming to the market very soon from, from what you see from their webpage. And all of these lenses here are based on micro-optics. That means, um, 
the opportunities are great for micro optics, um, but they're nevertheless challenges. So you have to increase, decrease the size and the weight and the power consumption. This is easy with micro optics, so it's not difficult to achieve. The efficiency is one of the main challenges. So you have to make a very efficient optical design, and you have to reduce the uh, absorption of the power in the in the in the in the absorbing elements to minimum. And at the same time, um, you have to reduce the costs. Um, so. But micro-optics is based on a wafer-level process that is already used uh, in, in, in consumer elements. So that means the cost reduction is feasible once you have it set up uh, uh, right away. Um, so the exterior lighter lighting is not all. You can go now also to interior lighting. That means in interior lighting, you have even more options uh, what you do. And in interior lighting, you almost always have uh, a grazing incident. That means a very shallow or very oblique angle of, of the projection. And for this, MLAs are, are, are a very nice and preferred solution. Um, I mentioned earlier that we're increasing our capacity. This is our clean room that we just uh, uh, finalized. Now the first equipment is coming in in the next couple of months. We will fully uh, uh, populate this with new equipment and we triple our capacities this way. Uh, 